Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today, inshallah, bi-idhnillah al-Aziz, I want to discuss the question of who chained Dajjal when they went on the boat and they saw Dajjal, he was chained. What is this all about? Why was he chained? And when will he come out of these chains? And what will cause him to come out of these changes? What would cause him to come out of these chains? And this is something that is important to understand if you're understanding what is happening in the dark side of the world. I'm not going to go into details, but I'm going to give enough details that, it, that two things will happen. Number one, you will realize that why the Jal will come out, one of the reasons. Number two, you will realize that uh, what Allah said in Quran is true, is true, is true, is true, 100% true. And what Quran says, you know, all these dark sciences, they have their knowledge and their sciences, and they all go back to Prophet Sulaiman all these dark sciences, okay? The Kabbalah, the, the you know, the... The, uh, the Freemasons, the Templars, all of these, the Illuminati, all these go back to Prophet Sulaiman They have a version that they think is correct. But it is only the Shayateen because Sulaiman had the power of the magic carpet. He had the power to go through air. He had the power to subdue everything. Right? He had the power to understand animals. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and that made Shayateen who are enemies of human beings, who are jealous of human beings, want to occupy what Sulaiman tried to occupy. In fact, I'll mention, show you a little bit of it. There were even these devils who tried to sit on the seat of Prophet Sulaiman according to the, the biblical version and according to the Jewish version, you know, Prophet Sulaiman was usurped from his throne, which there's an indication of something, not this, but something else, okay? But this similar story, you could say the story that comes out of the same event. So Prophet Suleiman was usurped from his throne, he was a king, and then somebody else sat on his king, and that's when Suleiman wasalam, did dua. And, but he was going house to house, begging people, telling people, I'm your real king, according to the Bible, not according to us. We don't know what the truth is as far as that is concerned, but we do know that he was tested with his kursi. And that has a specific interpretation, which I'm not going to go into today. But what I do want to talk about today is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran. فَسَخَّرْنَا لَهُ رِيحَ And we subjugated for him the winds. تَجْرِي amri That would go in the direction that he would command them. And they would go gently in the direction wherever he directed them. And these shayateen, they made things. They made humongous things. Okay? For Sulaiman alayhi And they were divers. They would dive into the sea. And so this is, you know, whether it is the pyramids, because there is, according to the Bible, a relationship between Prophet Suleiman and the Pharaoh, which I'm not going to talk about right now. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the thing that I really want to talk about. Allah says, وَآخَرِينَ مُقَرَّنِينَ فِي الْأَصْفَادِ And those, there were those, the big shayateen, what happened to them? وَآخَرِينَ مُقَرَّنِينَ فِي الْأَصْفَادِ there were those that were put in chains. And Allah mentions those that dive in the sea. Now, I will share with you a few important things that is very, very important. Okay? Uh, some of it might even shock you. Now when Tamim Ad-Dari, when he went and he saw the Dajjal, how did he see the Dajjal? We went, we entered into the monastery, okay, 
فَإِذَا فِيهِ أَعْذَمُ الْإِنسَانِ So he saw the jail, he was a huge human being. رَأَيْتَهُ قِطْأً خَلْقًا I never saw anyone more stronger than this. أَشَدُّ And then what was his state? وَثَاقًا مَجْمُوعَةٌ He was tied up. Okay. يَدَهُ عَلَىٰ أُنُقِي And his hands were tied to his neck. His hands were tied to his neck. Okay. So which is the Prophet that ties up the shayateen? Do you remember the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ? In which the Prophet said ﷺ when he caught the jinn, he said, I was going to tie him up. The shaytan that the Prophet caught, uh, the Prophet was going to tie him up to the pillar of of his masjid in Medina. And he was going to let the the children play with that shaytan. But the Prophet didn't do it out of respect for Sulaiman ﷺ. He is the man who tied up the shayateen and threw them into the sea. Okay, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Okay, and so where is the jet? The jet is by some place where there is a lot of water, a lot of sea. Okay, then let's look at this saying of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet said, In fi bahri shayateen. In the oceans are shayateen. Mahjoonatun. They are what? They are chained. Awthaquha Sulaiman. Sulaiman alayhi salatu wasalam tied up these shayateen. And then the Prophet said, and this is in Sahih Muslim. Yushaku an yukhraja fataqra ala nasi Qur'anan. And I fear, I fear, the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that these shayateen will come out. That these shayateen will come out and read Qur'an on the people. Now, will this be the Qur'an that Allah sent? Or will it be something that sounds like Qur'an? Because the Prophet did not say Al-Qur'an. Qur'anan could mean in its literal meaning recitation. They will recite on the people. Meaning they will do magic on the people. Or they will read Qur'an on the people. And they will read Qur'an on the people and they will not be affected by the Qur'an alone. Okay? Any of these meanings could be true. But we know today, those of us that are uh, dealing with human beings and dealing with our issues, we know how much shayateen are affecting the households nowadays. And so... Chains, by the way, iron is a very, very powerful tool against the shayateen. If anyone has a ruqya issue, one of the things you can do is to have iron with you. Okay? And iron is the, you can say, the, the kryptonite of the shayateen in the sense that uh, even Ibn Abbas, when he had a knife that he killed the shaytan that was looking uh, like his student had the knife by which he killed the shaytan that was pres- presenting itself like in the form of Ibn Abbas But the Prophet said وسلم, the shahada finger in the prayer is harder on shaitan than hadith, than iron. And so from there we can connect the ayah We sent down the iron and it is great strength. And so man can deal with iron but shaitan becomes weakened with iron. So using Iron, like the iron skillet when you cook, getting iron into your body. A lot of times I've noticed when people have magic, it's because one of the things I've seen is that they, they have uh, they have lack of iron. Okay, So that's something to definitely consider. Okay, And so the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna fil bahri shayateen. And so Sulaiman would send the jinns down into the oceans. Why? Because building is clear. Building is clear you built something what was the reason to send them to the ocean there are many reasons but one of them is this is where he would block them up this is where he would block up the shayateen and if you read the demonology and mythology and that you find this okay this relationship but allah knows best but they are chained in the ocean and the prophet that was allowed to chain them was who prophet sulaiman and who chained the jal most likely Prophet Sulaiman This is a website called Jewish uh, Encyclopedia. Again, you will find over and over again, Uzza and Azil were chained by Prophet Sulaiman. You'll find over and over again this concept of Prophet Sulaiman chaining up the shayateen. 
chaining up the shayateen, this concept you would find over, like when it comes to Prophet Suleiman, he was well known for this in the in the biblical text. Over here is another Jewish book that goes into this same detail and the same stories of how Suleiman uh, would chain up the shayateen. Okay, so uh, over here I would like to show you. This is, is specifically a shaitan that tried to rebel against Prophet Sulaiman And over here I want to read to you, the temple, while it was being built, was made whole, draft stones, yet hammers and axes or any instrument wrought of iron, wrought of iron, anything of iron was not heard in the making of the temple by the shayateen, because the iron hurts them. And so, Prophet Suleiman used the shayateen, according to them, to build the temple. So what does that mean? That means these rabbis want to use Kabbalah, and they want to use their dark sciences to bring out all the shayateen to help them build the temple. And when this will happen, when the shayateen will come out from the oceans, when they will be coming out, and when they will be coming out, then with that will be the, the, the one who is waiting to come out. The one who will tell them to bring me out now. Okay, and that is Dajjal, Masihud Dajjal. And I'm going to talk more about what's the relationship between this and, and, and Dajjal. But over here, I'm just only showing that <clears throat> here's another shaitan uh, that, according to the fables that they have, okay, the testament of Suleiman, who takes, you know, this uh, jinn, I don't even know how to say her, the name, okay, and, you know, Suleiman alayhi salatu salam puts that person, that jinn, that shaitan in chains, okay, again, the demons, okay, he puts them in chains one after the other, and then here's a list of all the demons that, according to them, that they put in, the Prophet Sulaiman put in chains. So Allah said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَطْلُوا الشَّيَاطِينُ وَعَلَى مُلْكِ سُلَيْمَانِ And recite to them, what they recited to them, and they followed, what the shayateen recited to them about the kingdom of Sulaiman And this is where the dark sciences come. Whether it is the Jewish Kabbalah, whether it is the Christian Templars, whether it is any, even, uh, even some of the aspects of Buddhism, they all go back to this idea of Prophet Sulaiman and his control of the jinns. And this is used to entice them to get into the world of darkness and in the world of sin, and in the world of temptation, and in the world of where they think they're controlling human beings, but in fact the shayateen are controlling them. And so this will play a big role when the, as the shayateen start leaving the seas. And I'm telling you that they have already started to leave the seas. They have already started to come out. And this is one of the things that is happening that very, very powerful shayateen are beginning to do their work now.